Good morning. I welcome members to the third meeting in 2015 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. As always, ask everyone to turn off mobile phones, please. Uh, agenda item one is a decision on taking business in private. It's proposed that we take items 11, 12, and 13 in private. 11 is a consideration of the Scottish Government's response to the Committee's report on Community Empowerment, Scotland Bill at Stage 1. Item 12 is further consideration of the Delegated Powers provisions in the Assisted Suicide Scotland Bill. And item 13 is consideration of a draft report on the Air Weapons and Licensing Scotland Bill. Does the Committee agree to take this in private, please? Agreed. Thank you very much. Agenda item 2 is the Legal Writings, Counterparts and Delivery Scotland Bill. And we now turn to the formal Stage 2 proceedings of this bill. I welcome the Minister for Business. Uh, and, and Economy and Tourism, who is accompanied by Rhea Phillips from the Civil Law Reform Unit and Neil MacLeod from the Solicitor's Constitutional and Civil Law Division of the Scottish Government. Welcome, colleagues. We have no amendments to deal with, but in terms of standing orders, we are obliged to consider each section of the bill and the long title and agree each formally. Before we do that, I invite any questions members may have or any comment which the Minister may wish to make. Minister, would you? Um, I have no comment. Thank you very much indeed. Do members have any comments to make? No? Uh, we will take the sections in order and then the long title. Standing orders do allow us to put a single question when groups of sections are to be considered consecutively. So the first question is therefore whether sections 1 to 7 are agreed to. Are we all agreed, please? Agreed. Thank you. The second question is that long title be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Agreed. Thank you. And that completes stage two consideration of the bill. And uh, thank you very much to the minister and his staff for coming. Thank you also to members of the Scottish Law Commission for coming along to witness this historic day. But that's where we've got to. I look forward to stage three. I look forward to more meetings like this. <laughs> thank you very much indeed, Minister. I shall briefly suspend uh, simply to enable us to move out as far as, as you me too. Thank you. Welcome back. Okay, thank you. Turning now to agenda item three, uh, this is guidance subject to approval. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Scottish Regulators Strategic Code of Practice, SG 2015, number 10. However, the committee may wish to note that this redrafted Code of Practice addresses concerns the committee reported in relation to the previous draft, SG 2014-236, which the committee considered on the 25th of November. Does the committee agree to note this and report that it is content with the Code of Practice? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item four, instruments subject to affirmative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Equality Act 2010, specification of public authorities, Scotland Order 2015 draft. Is the committee content with this instrument, please? Thank you. Agenda item five, instruments subject to negative procedure. The Land and Buildings Transaction Tax Transitional Provisions, Scotland Order 2014, SSI 2014 377. Articles three and four of the order do not implement the Scottish Government's intention to additionally make transa transitional provision for contracts for land transactions that were entered to on the 1st of May 2012. Does the committee agree to draw the attention of Parliament to the order on reporting ground I, as the drafting of Articles 3 and 4 appears to be defective. Agreed. Does the committee agree to note, however, that the Scottish Government has undertaken to correct this by laying an amending instrument which will come into force on the 1st of April 2015, the same day as this order? Agreed. Agreed. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Land and Building Transaction Tax Administration Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014, 375, nor on the Civil Jurisdiction and Judgments Amendment Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015, 1. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Content. Thank you. Agenda item 6, instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. And no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Act of Sederance, Sheriff Court Adoption Rules Amendment 2015, SSI 2015, 5. Is the committee content with that instrument, please? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 7 is the Budget Scotland No. 4 Bill. The next item of, uh, is, is consideration of that bill, and the bill confers one delegated power set out in Section 7 of the bill, which makes provision for budget revision regulations. This power is subject to affirmative procedure. 
does the committee agree to report that it is satisfied with the power in section 7 of the bill and that its exercise is subject to the affirmative procedure? Agreed. Thank you. Agenda item 8, Public Bodies Act Consent Memorandum. This is consideration of the Public Bodies Abolition of Advisory Committees on Pesticides Order 2015 draft, the United Kingdom Government Order <coughs> under the UK Public Bodies Act 2012, 2011, apologies. The consent of the Scottish Parliament is required to make an order under Part 1 of the Public Bodies Act 2011, where such an order makes provision which would be within the legislative competence of the Scottish Parliament. The Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee considers and reports on such orders under the same grounds as instruments laid before the Parliament. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on this order. Does the committee agree to report it? It's co content with the order, please. Great. Thank you. Agenda item number nine, serious crime bill, which is UK Parliament legislation. Under this item, the committee is invited to consider the powers to make subordinate legislation conferred on the Scottish ministers in this UK bill. The committee may then report to the League Committee on these provisions. A briefing paper has uh, been provided. It sets out the relevant aspects of the bill and comments on their effects. The, an amendment to the bill was tabled on the 8th of January, proposing a new clause 11. That clause would enable Scottish ministers, by regulations, to confer power on sheriff courts to make a telecommunications restriction order. A telecommunications restriction order is an order requiring a communications provider to take the action specified in the order for the purpose of preventing or restricting the use of communication devices by persons detained in prisons or young offenders institutions. It suggested the committee may wish to find the power proposed in new clause 11 to be accepted in principle and to be content that the power is subject to the affirmative procedure. However, the committee may wish to draw the terms of the proposed power to the attention of the League Committee in respect that, one, the power enables Scottish ministers to create offences for the breach of telecommunication restriction orders without specifying the maximum penalty which may be imposed for any offence created, and two, there is an apparent discrepancy between the scope of the power and the stated policy intention in the supplementary uh, LCM. Does the committee agree to report to the... Lead committee accordingly, Stuart, first. Um, uh, colleagues may recall that the Tribunals Act uh, introduced a similar provision um, uh, during the passage of the bill um, that uh, did not provide for a limit of penalty uh, and responded to this committee's uh, uh, indication that it was uncomfortable that uh, secondary legislation done in this way should have that effect. And I think similarly here, uh, we should uh, invite the government to consider uh, whether in fact there should be a much more substantial explanation of what the plan uh, and or uh, our provision that uh, makes sure that there is a limit to the penalties, however large that limit might be, rather than it being an unlimited penalty. Thank you. John. I would agree with absolutely with what uh, Stuart Stevenson has just said. Um, and I suppose the unlimited um, penalty may reflect uh, what might be the content of a call and the importance or the significance of such calls being made from prison. And that is perhaps why. But I, I agree with Stuart entirely that we need a, a, an explanation it may be that there is a reasonable explanation as to why there is no uh, limit on the penalty at the moment. Indeed. Okay, on that basis, does the committee agree to report to the League Committee in the terms that I'd suggested? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. Agenda item 10, Small Business, Enterprise and Employment Bill, which is also UK Parliament legislation. This legislation confers powers to make subordinate legislation on Scottish ministers. A briefing paper again, has been provided, which suggests the committee could seek a written explanation of matters relating to sections 149 to 151 of the bill and on a proposed new clause. The committee would then consider the response at the next week's meeting with the intention of agreeing a draft report. Clauses 149 to 151 and a proposed new clause provide the Treasury and Scottish ministers with powers to make regulations requiring a public sector employee or office holder in receipt of an exit payment as a result of leaving work or the relevant office to return the payment or a proportion of it. 
the supplies where they return to be an employee or contractor of a public sector authority as prescribed in the regulations or a holder of a public of sector office so prescribed. These regulations would have significance. For example, they would prescribe the public sector authorities and office holders in respect to which the regulations would apply which exit payments would be within the scope of the repayment requirement and which exemptions from the requirements would be available. Does the committee therefore agree to ask the Scottish Government why it has been considered appropriate that the regulations made by Scottish Ministers under Clause 149 of the Bill should be subject to scrutiny by Parliament by the negative procedure rather than the affirmative procedure? John. Yes, I mean, I, I think this is quite important because a, I mean, it does appear to be quite wide-ranging powers Sometimes the sums involved are quite considerable and they also attract quite a lot of media attention often mm -hmm. uh, when somebody leaves one post and enters another. Um, so I think it would be good to have an explanation as to why it is the negative procedure rather than the positive. Uh, am I right in thinking that the committee is happy that we seek that explanation? We are. Stuart. Um, similarly, although the sums of money are probably rather less than the ones um, John Mason's just referred to, um, we don't appear to have an explanation, and I think it would be appropriate if one were given, uh, as to why um, parliamentarians leaving office and returning to office are caught by the proposals, but ministers leaving office and returning to office are not caught. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be useful for there to be an explanation as to why that distinction is being made. Thank you for those comments. Thank you. That completes agenda item 10, and I now move this meeting into private.